So welcome everybody. I'm super happy to be here on Wednesday for the Inner Circle and I'm joined today by Beth Hollis from Ocean Rock Wellness here in Bermuda and Beth's going to talk to us today about heart math and then we're going to have some time to have some questions and answers at the end. Welcome Beth. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here and I see a few familiar names and faces, so that's great. I was just letting the crowd know that, um, yes, I'm a physiotherapist, and then I actually got into being a heart math practitioner. And the reason I did that is because I had a lot of patients with a cranky nervous system. So when they have chronic pain and things going on like that, it's really hard to get to the root cause of healing without addressing the nervous system. So I did a deeper dive into understanding the nervous system, which really then takes you into stress, understanding stress. And, you know, a lot of my clients have physical stressors, but there's emotional stressors, chemical stressors, just so many different types of stress in our body and our body even if it's a different type of stressor, reacts the same by activating this nervous system. So I wanted to really understand how to calm the nervous system so my clients could get better results. And the cool thing about it is that it was started with a, a lot of my clients with physical pain, but then I ended up helping my colleagues, patients who are having even resistant weight loss or digestive issues, anxiety, so many things fall under the umbrella of creating a cranky nervous system. So I'll just explain a little bit about that cranky nervous system, and then it will make more sense when we talk about heart math. So our nervous system, which I'm sure Dr. Keenan has talked to you about before, um, has two sides of the coin. We have our um, sympathetic fight or flight and parasympathetic. So even if you've heard this before, it's great to hear it multiple ways, different times so that the, the learning really solidifies. I mean, I had to, I still go on presentations about the nervous system because there's always more to learn. It's so cool. So let's think of what would happen if we have a sympathetic response. Okay. So we start to breathe faster, our heart rates faster. Our blood flow is actually going to our arms and our legs because we are ready to fight or flight. <laughs> and what happens is that all of that energy, right, creates this chemical soup of adrenaline and norepinephrine. And over time we get more cortisol and our body is wired for survival. And as we keep tapping into that survival state, our body is actually getting depleted because we are not prioritizing digestion or detoxification or healing at all. In fact, our blood flow gets shunted from our organs because why would we focus on those precious organs when we have a tiger who's chasing us, right? It's just our body is designed for survival. So we actually now more than ever have a very triggering environment. We're very distracted, right? Always on the phone, getting lots of stimulus in different ways. We could have chronic illnesses. We could have physical discomfort. And it's actually our job to pause in the day to, to reset our nervous system because we are the ones who are ultimately in control of where our nervous system is. Okay, so even though some of those things happen to us, we can actually manually flip the switch, which is amazing because it just means that you have the power to heal your own body by getting on top of your nervous system. So to flip that switch, um, heart math is just one of the many tools, um, but I love heart math the most because it has 20 years of research backed. It has some um, technology you can use to support it and it's really they have because of those years of research they have made it very simple for the user and very effective right so the longer they've kind of gone through those exercises they've really distilled it down to a, a very awesome exercise so the reason heart math works is because we're getting into the present moment Right. And when we're in the present moment, we can all look around. There's really no nothing that's going to to rev up our nervous system. 
And after getting into the present moment, we calm our breath and then we add an elevated feeling. So I'll explain all that when we do the practice together. But just um, as a side note, the reason it also works is because we tap into our vagus nerve. Because as we slow down the breath, we actually then can work on our vagal tone because our vagus nerve comes right from the base of our skull all the way down, innervates lots of organs along the way and goes through the diaphragm. So as you're breathing well, you're actually moving that diaphragm, activating the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is my favorite because there's people with vagus nerve um, poor tone in the vagus nerve or poor vagal tone um, dysfunction basically. And they have all sorts of different symptoms because some people say you had a whiplash injury and you physically hurt your neck and you have lots of inflammation and pain that can affect your vagal tone. Or you could have digestive issues, um, dysbiosis in the gut and that could affect your vagal tone. So it's amazing how one practice of getting our vagus nerve involved can help so many different symptoms, so many different ailments, because again, it's our nervous system. It's calming it down, it's reducing inflammation, which as we know is a huge contributor to those chronic illnesses. So we are gonna do heart math to also activate the vagus nerve, which is um, something that is so highly um, being talked about now, research now, because we're getting finally away from that conventional medicine model saying, you know, take a pill and you'll be okay to no, 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 no. You have a responsibility in this and your responsibility is to calm your nervous system, activate your own body's potential and play a role in your healing. And this is, this is the way it's shifting because we've known that just taking a, a pill is only going to help for a short time. And it's not really a tool for long-term relief. So that is, is kind of one way of getting into our um, fixing the vagus nerve. But HeartMath was so smart. They said, okay, if we tell people to just sit there and breathe, right? You told me to breathe, you know, and I I know all of you as well would be writing those grocery lists, thinking about what you have to do. Um, I'm flying out on Friday. So I've got to like, think about what I got to pack and all this thing. And so sometimes we, our mind is too busy, right? It's called a monkey mind for a reason. And HeartMath knew that they said, no, 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 we need to tap into the intelligence of the heart because our heart has that big electromagnetic field around us and it is really um like a backdoor into healing okay because when our heart is in a loving vibration it actually calms the brain and i know dr keenan told you because one of her clients came to me and said yes beth there's actually more pathways from the heart up to the brain than the brain down and i was yes you know you remember it is so true and you can feel this when you go around kids, right? Who are just having fun and laughing. You can you can feel that joy radiate all around them and it, you just get sucked into that loving feeling. Well, it's the same for the heavy feelings, right? That anger and frustration and um, anxiety, all those feelings are very heavy and they deplete our body. So they're going to be lower vibration and actually instead of building us up, right? Where it's actually slowly breaking us down. So heart math, that's why I love this tool because it also says, hey, I might feel really frustrated and angry, but again, it's my job to flip that switch and get into a higher vibrational emotion so I can heal. Um, I've given um, the example before of my mom because there's, there's different types of people. Sometimes you, people hear something and it rolls off their back, right? That's me. Um, but my husband, my mom, my son, I've learned that I've attracted all these sensitive people into my life and they hold on to it. So one, I have to be careful what I say. And two, I have to understand that, okay, so they're going to hold on to it. So this tool is important for them because my mom would be slamming cupboards two hours later. And I'm like, mom, what are you, what are you doing? Well, you know, and 
I'm like, no, I don't know. That's that's your fault for being angry still, right? The other person is happy as a clam. And so you have to consciously, like you can get mad, you can totally get mad, but you can't stay mad, right? Because it's only depleting your own body. And so people who you know stay frustrated, hold grudges, hang on, heart math really helps them because they can flip that switch emotionally. Um, it's so cool because as I said, it's, it's such an awesome tool that it helps many people in different ways. It helps some people just get present in the moment, notice their breath. It helps some people not hang on to heavy emotions, right? There's so many cool, um, uh, different approaches. So we, um, we're going to do some heart math together. All right. And the practice is, as I said, basically three steps where the first step is getting into the present moment. We use our breath for that because we can really anchor ourselves to the present moment by being in our body. So what that means is that your thoughts are not gonna be in the past or they're not gonna be in the future. They're just focusing on the body. And when your mind wanders, you just come back to your breath because it happens all the time. So after we start slowing the breath down, then we add a nice elevated emotion. So thinking of joy and happiness, it's basically um, your muse, right? I use my dog because he brings me so much happiness every day, um, but you could use a favorite place. Uh, you could use family, anything that you really feel like warms your heart and, and makes you feel like you wanna smile. And what we do is we just then radiate that feeling to ourselves, or we can even radiate it to others. And it's a very, um, don't let the simplicity fool you. It's very effective because we're resetting our nervous system. And um, I've noticed many of my clients, they, they actually have some um, calming practices, but what we often forget is that sometimes the, what we think is calming is really more of an escape, right? They'll say, oh yeah, I go home and I turn on the TV and I forget about it all. That's fine. Like we all need an escape as well, but we also have to have a calming piece where we are the active participants and we are setting the intention and staying with our mind in our body. So Going for a walk can feel really nice, especially looking around and, and noticing nature and being present, right? And, and so these practices can be done. So heart math can be done when you're walking or sitting and looking at the ocean, but it's just you setting that intention that you are working on yourself, which might be different than reading a book or having a cup of tea or watching movie where all of that is still restful downtime this is more of an active conscious um, decision to work on it. So that's the little difference because sometimes we get stuck in escape and we forget to do the calming piece. And we all know how to challenge ourselves in, in many ways. So that's what, how I like to break up my day and even my week. Um, you can think, oh, okay, I had a really busy day, lots of challenges, maybe physically challenging, or mentally challenging, then I need to add more calming. Or some days I have more calming techniques, which help balance out for the whole week. So just as long as you remember that calming needs to be in there as well as your challenge and your escape, um, you can find more balance. So yeah, does anyone um, have any questions? You can always put them in the chat before we do a little practice together. I know there'll be more um, time to chat at the end if you um, wanna save your, your questions till then. All right, looks good. And did you have anything to add Dr. Keenan before we dive in? It's, um, it's just wonderful to have you on with us, Beth, and really to talk about that idea of empowerment, you know, because that's it, is when we realize that we are the ones in control and that our healing, I love how you, it's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> um, because it really shifts um, how we how we look at healthcare in general. Because so many people they think it's the pill that's going to make me better, but it's not. We have to really turn around and reflect what's on the inside of us and how we take ownership of that. 
It's so true. We and and even another layer, something that I often hear is that people say, well, oh, my mom also had diabetes or my granny. And and then it, so it's that genetic component, which, again, genes do play a role, but they are not the main predictor. Right. It's more of your lifestyle and your daily choices and your daily habits that will help those genes express or not express. So. Yeah, I feel like sometimes we get caught, um, as you said, not not just blaming other people, but also thinking that there's outside sources that are going to fix you. But really, it's such an inner, inner job and it's an inner journey. And guess what? The best part about it is that you might hear a little bit today and you're not sure, but it's going to come back around. And at some point, these tools will, you know, they'll you'll be ready to receive this information. So not everyone, especially when I first see them, are ready for heart math, but maybe a year later, you know, they'll call me and be like, you know what, I think I'm ready. The same thing happens even for exercise and for yoga, right? Like we go in and out of the things that we need, um, but just stay open-minded and give it a try. And then what um, I'm finding is even now seeing a younger crowd because there's, the environment that we live in is so different. So there's a lot of teenagers who are really having a hard time coping. And this really does work because whatever you practice, you get good at, right? And so I've seen some of you in my office and you've been practicing being a stress bot for years, right? Like You are really good at stressing out. I get it because you practice that. I mean, I have a mom and I'm a mom and I know what, you know, you can get into these patterns and you, whatever you practice, you get good at. So you have to be patient, right? If I told you to go play a sport and I just put you straight into the sport in a game situation, you would be mad at me. You'd be like, I've never played. What do you mean I'm supposed to? But that's how you act with sometimes these breathing exercise. They come back and they're like, well, Beth, I was stressed at the bank and I tried breathing and didn't really help. And I was like, cause you haven't practiced yet. That's okay. You know, it's not one of those one off, but as you strengthen your vagal tone and as you tap into your nervous system, it becomes more responsive. So then all of a sudden you've been practicing for a few months and then something that would usually trigger you, it might not trigger you anymore. Or you might not stay wound up in your, your anxiety, in your stress loop because your body is saying, oh no, okay, we've done this before. We know how to flip the switch. And it really does take practice and consistency, like anything, our body just needs, you know, some time with it to then heal. And some people need a bit longer because they've had trauma, right? Physical trauma or emotional trauma. And our body get, holds on to that trauma. And our nervous system is so quick, right? To say, I know this, you know, and it gets really into survival mode even faster for the people who've had trauma. So you have to be patient, you have to, you know, take it slow and be consistent. And then that's when the stories I hear, you know, they come back months later and say, wow, Beth, I mean, first of all, just being aware of the state your body's in is huge, right? Because if you're on autopilot in survival mode for five, 10 years, and then all of a sudden you're thinking about your body, like that's even a huge improvement, right? Checking in. So the, the heart math story for everyone is a little bit different of how they implement it and what um, success they get. But before we do a practice, I'm going to tell you my favorite story. So I have a a patient who actually learned heart math with me and her discovery was that she could be, she, um, so let me tell you, so stressful job, right. Would get into a stressful state, drive home and her drive home. She would just be fuming. It was like the car just was where she marinated all of these feelings for the day. And it was not healthy. And, um, really a lot of people noticed that around COVID because they didn't have the car ride. So some couldn't even change their feelings. Anyway, when she got home, she would fly off the handle at whoever was first in her view. And a lot of times her kids took the brunt of it. 
which is just because she didn't have the coping mechanisms, right? And so she was angry and frustrated by the time she got home. And then that, remember, we radiate from our heart. So that vibration made her whole family, it's like misery, you know, is contagious. So she would bring the vibe down for her whole family. And she knew she was the culprit, but at the same time, she, you know, didn't have anything else to do. So what she called it was her love goggles. So get into her car, put on her love goggles, which just means do some heart math. And then when she got home, she was viewing the world from a heartfelt perspective. So instead of starting with that frustration and anger and she was actually in a loving vibration and it changed her relationship with her whole family because now she walked in and she could actually see the positive. Oh, you did empty the dishwasher, right? So, and I have this, even in my house, sometimes you ask a family member to do X, Y, Z. And as soon as you walk in, if you don't see X, Y, Z done, that's it. But when you have love goggles, you can see, oh, they did A, B, C, good you know and you kind of have to understand and be more just thoughtful about it and approach things with love and it's amazing the the transition her family went through and how they started communicating better and just changed the whole vibe which was amazing because I'm thinking I just told her how to do heart math and she implemented it where it, it transformed her whole relationship with her family so yeah, there's some pretty cool cases out there. Really cool. Um, I'm sure her family wants to come thank me. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it really can help your relationships um, because if you put on love goggles first, right, you're treating people with that love and kindness and then it comes back to you. And so you're just, um, if and, and I know this too, because some people are glass half empty, right? I'm a glass half full. It, it comes naturally to me, but people who are glass half empty, you can actually bring them up just by working on yourself, right? I was, I was for years trying to work on my husband. I mean, we've been married for 13 years and it was actually Dr. Famous who first introduced to me that idea of no, 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 Beth, just keep working on yourself. And as you raise your vibration and you become this love magnet, everyone around you elevates, it's so cool. And, and then because you stop pointing out their negativity, then it just kind of goes away, right? So whatever you focus on, whatever you practice gets bigger. So don't focus on the negative. Don't focus on the stress. Just focus on heart math, focus on love, joy, just, um, yeah. And you'll see a huge difference. So I like to say that it's, I think Joe Dispenza expression, but where focus goes, energy flows, right? Yeah. So what, like you said, what we practice on, where we put our attention, that's the results that we're going to get. Um, yeah. And we we can learn that through the daily routine. And the better it's going to get is all dependent on us. We can't blame anybody else, right? So if you're still looking for that outside measure of help, well, why is he not doing this? Or why is she not doing that? You cannot control anyone outside of you, right? Um, the only thing that we can control is us, what we say, what we do, and how we act. That's so, right. Yeah. And then and then we 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 can just watch in amazement of how things fall into place, right? Then um it it is really cool because then you get into serendipitous moments. So many fun things happen as as you work on yourself. So Awesome. So I think that's enough of an explanation. I could talk for many more hours on this topic. It's a lot of fun. Um, and so now we're going to practice together. So if everyone can just um, get comfortable. And that's great. You're going to close your eyes. I find closing the eyes just helps bring the focus inward. And now begin to notice your breath. You're gonna notice your inhale and notice your exhale. And try to just breathe through the nose today.
And as you notice your breath, I want you to start to make it a little bit bigger than usual. Expanding the inhale and the exhale. And as you deepen your breath, I want you to send it all the way down to your belly. So as you breathe in, you can feel your belly rise like a balloon. And as you exhale, it relaxes back down. Very good. Keep focusing on the breath. Long, slow breaths down to the belly. You can feel your body relax. And if your mind drifts, just bring it back to the breath. Now that you have a slow and smooth breath, you're going to bring awareness to your heart. Imagine your breath is also flowing in and around your heart space. And as you breathe into your heart, it's time to activate a regenerative, loving feeling. So try to re-experience the feeling of joy and happiness. Perhaps you're thinking of your favorite place or the feeling when you're surrounded by people you love. And keep breathing that loving, joyful feeling into your heart. You can feel that smile, that feeling of being light. There's nothing else you need to do, nowhere else you need to be. Just bathe in this joyful, happy feeling. And you're gonna send this loving feeling to the rest of your body. It's like a warm blanket. Sending it to any areas that need extra love and support. And feeling that love and that slow breath swirl around.
And remind yourself, you can tap into this loving feeling whenever you need to. You're going to take a few more juicy breaths for me. Long and slow, filling that heart with love. And now when you're ready, slowly bringing your awareness back into this space. And opening your eyes when it feels right. Beautiful. And that's really how simple it is, but it's very transformative because we're improving our blood flow to our organs. And where there's blood flow, there's healing, right? Where there's intention, there's healing. So you can even sit in that feeling and really help heal yourself from whatever you're working on. Or it might be a quick mental shift to get into a positive vibration. Um, this really helps after a heavy moment, right? If you have um, someone who calls you and needs to talk through some, some troubles, after right you might feel a bit depleted but if you do heart math you can flip the switch get yourself into a more healing state and that way by the end of the day you're not going to feel as exhausted because you've really helped throughout the day regulate your own nervous system and you'll be have more energy right you'll feel more calm and my favorite part is that when you start getting into this loving vibration, you actually notice uh, around you who is your kind of like energy vampire, right? Like who you're like, oh my gosh, you know, and sometimes you just then can protect yourself a bit more because you say, oh, I notice, right? That I feel more depleted after an interaction with such and such, right? I, I feel like I get a lot of this where people are saying, yeah, Beth, but I, I'm working on it, but the other people around me, like, I get it, but then you need to have boundaries, right? If you, if you keep accepting that call, they're going to keep calling. If you say, I actually don't have the space to hold this conversation right now, or I'm working on a few things. Um, can we talk later in the week? Right. You, you can actually say those things and they'll respect you for putting up those boundaries because it really shows that you're protecting yourself and you're working on yourself and then maybe they might get the hint right oh yeah maybe I do just call and dump and I haven't even asked you how your day was um you know I've had quite a few clients who who really notice the negative because they've been focusing on the positive but when you've been in negative for so long right you're used to it you don't even notice what where your energy is de getting depleted or where you're you're, um, you know, giving out too much more than you're getting back and you can become more protective because, hey, if you're doing all this work, you know, you want to, to it, the results to last. And so you can become, um, yeah, just better at putting up your, your boundaries. And it's really helpful, actually. Yeah. Well, it's, it's great, Beth. And, um, you know, because Heart Math, you're right, it taps into so many things and it gives us that ability to know that, we have energy that can be depleted or we can raise it and that we have the choice to do those things. Yeah. So maybe what I'll do is I'll get everyone, if you want to take your cameras off for those that want to. And then if you have questions for Beth, um, because I know that there's lots of more things that I would ask her as well, but I know that there's a few of you that might have some questions too. Yes, I welcome all the questions. Oh, go ahead, Cindy. Hi. Hi, Beth. Thank you. Uh, I I really have tried to use some of these methods since Dr. Keenan introduced us, and I'm, 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 I have to say I'm really enjoying it. But my question is regarding kids, because I have a lot of grandkids, 
And I notice a lot of them are dealing with anxieties. Mm -hmm. And one in particular has been particularly ill for months and she, the IW nervous system that's being attacked. So I'm wondering as a grandmother, how could I introduce her to something like this? Right. Well, I um, I am happy to help you with that because I um, HeartMath has other technologies that help with kids. So although I want everyone to practice on their own, right, sometimes with kids, they are more attracted to that biofeedback and making it more of a game and things like that. So HeartMath, I actually have the thing right here. So I've seen quite a few kids in my office. And it has an earpiece, right, that goes on my ear. I could even show you my screen, technically. Anyway, so the kids have a program where when they're breathing, the hot air balloon lifts. And if they're not breathing well, it descends. So they get a visual representation of their breath. And um, kids are very tactile. So... A lot of times I'd put my hands on them, right? Or I have their family put their hands on them, you know, breathe into my hands, breathe, fill your, your belly. So a lot of it is around the breathing because intuitively they know how to be happy, right? It's just getting them into the happy space. Um, but I feel like it's actually more of the breathing that we focus on because when they're stuck in that sympathetic drive, they're really just sipping on air and they're not getting into their body and feeling their body. And um, uh, getting them to recognize some of the feelings in their body is also really cool. Like a lot of the kids tell me, oh, it feels like a knot in my tummy. Whereas adults, we, we are less aware of our bodies and we don't necessarily associate emotions with feelings in our body, right? Even though a lot of people carry stress in certain muscles and, and um, have um, loose bowels when they have a lot of stress. Um, but kids also feel it and having them talk about it and breathe through it um, has been helpful. We're using heart math um, with the the games. Essentially, they have heart math games for kids. Yeah, but it's very good that you're getting involved because this this is what it's all about. Right. Is that with you practicing, then you get to teach the next generation, the next generation. And unfortunately, um, the kids today have too much um, screen time, right? Too much stimulus and not enough of that calming. And yeah, it's um, getting them outside, getting their feet on the grass, just talking, going back to the basics. And I really think having, um, taking away the screen time really helps as well, which, um, which I'm not sure how, that's also tricky because I know the dynamics because I'm a parent and, you know, grandparents too. And nowadays, like everyone's into screens, right? And so even sometimes my, my mom was letting my kids use her phone and put these games on her phone. I'm like, mom, you can, don't put, let them put games on your phone. She's like, well, I play with games on my wall. <laughs> but because she's retired, I didn't know this, um, that she plays games on her phone. I was like, oh my goodness, I have to tell you about screen time. <laughs> um, but yeah, just just be there for them. And you can always come and do a visit together and we um, can do it together, essentially. Um, are, are you down in Bermuda or, or up here in Canada? Oh, sorry, I'm in Bermuda. You're in Canada? Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm coming to Canada on Friday to uh, see my family. I'm also Canadian. From Ontario, though, right, Beth? Yes, Ontario. Um, but heart math practitioners are all over. And um, you can also order a heart math device. And the app is on your phone called Inner Balance. And um, I'd have to see if they have the kids' screens. Of course, the ones. So, yeah, well, we can look into that because I know the... The desktop version has all of the games for the kids, but the app on the phone, I haven't seen, maybe they have a different app that's more child friendly, but I haven't seen the, the games on the inner balance, but that's a great question too. Um, yeah. And maybe what I'll do, Cindy, when I'm home and for those that are in Miramichi, maybe I'll try to do a session 
that we can kind of go through some of these tools. I can bring my device um, so that you could see it because I'm going to be home September 18th for a week. So in about three weeks time. So maybe we'll try to plan something for then. Yeah, that's good. Um, but definitely focusing on the breathing for the kids and getting their, their mind into their body more because of the screen time distractions, just spending more time in their bodies is, is helpful. But you can order the, um, the device on Amazon, right? To attach to your phone. Yes. I'm just okay. not sure they have, um, the, um, children's games on the device i don't see it here i don't remember seeing it maybe i haven't downloaded upgraded but it's usually just the circles and yeah and yeah so. i just flicked through it quickly and i don't see it but um i can write them to see if they do have um anything because the desktop version has a lot for kids so i'm wondering if they've ever put that into um an app as well that we're guarantee just it's out there somewhere <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And they do have heart math. Like there is a program, Cindy, on the heart math website that is designed for kids. And it's, it's kind of a play. Like there's a, it's, it's, I guess it's interactive. It's like little videos and things. Um, but it is designed for, I think they call it heart math for parents and teachers or something like that. Right. Um, yeah. And YouTube has a lot on there as well with doing, um, <laughs> it was funny because I'd start doing them with my kids, these meditations for kids, these visual visualizations and stuff. And um, my kids are very different, but my daughter, she, she was saying, oh, and imagine you have a tree house and what color are your curtains? And my daughter's like, I don't want curtains. I was like, shh. You know? <laughs> it was so funny. Um, so it was actually, my son loves the meditations and visualizing because he lives in his imagination and my daughter's not like that at all. So she kept talking through it and saying, I don't want curtains. I'm like, okay, there's no curtains. It's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, trying some of the meditations with them, you'll have a laugh, trust me. Thank you. Any other questions from the crowd? Or if you just want to type anything in the chat as well. I know for me, one of the questions, Beth, of course, comes back to the vagus nerve, you know, when we see this and there is so much talk about, you know, polyvagal theory and how can one thing work on so many body systems. But, you know, I love the discussion that's coming now because it truly can, because the vagus nerve is the longest. It wanders everywhere kind of in the body. Um, have you seen a lot of individuals do you feel that more people are hearing about it even before they come to see you now? Yes, I, they, they are. They're talking about, there's definitely a buzz around the vagus nerve. And um, what I often hear is people want to go right to, let's stimulate the crap out of it. Like, listen, I get it. We, you know, we, again, it's one of those, those, it's another tool, but I always start with the tools of you working on yourself, because if I just had, say, they have um, a vibration machine that you can put on your neck, they have um, basically a TENS machine that has the ear things, I can do ear acupuncture with some clients, massage, you can do gargling, you can do gagging, you can do singing and humming, there's uh, many ways to activate the vagus nerve, and Really, the best are the things that you can do for free and ultimately remind yourself that you have to get into the present moment, do some slower, longer breaths, um, because just stimulating it, right, isn't going to give you that inner work. And sometimes that's when when you're quiet with yourself, that's when things come up and you realize what the heck you're actually working on, right? Like, But if you don't have that quiet, that stillness, then you're still just busy, 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 and relying on an external source um, to to vibrate your vagus nerve. So um, I mostly hear with people who want to go straight to the, the big guns, which it is another tool and it's great, but I'm just happy if they use it in conjunction with breath work, you know, with some some heart math and not just on its own. Because then I think sometimes you're right, it can be just another escape for them. Let me put this clip on or let me put this machine 
but yeah. it's still not doing the work. Like even, you know, many people now talk about the Healy device, you know, which is much more um, works on many different levels, but still, if you're not doing, if you're not anchoring yourself to the present, mm -hmm. these machines, no matter what it is, they're limited in what they can do because ultimately we need to slow down. And if there's something in there that has to come up, well, it's got to come up. <laughs> exactly. Do you remember all those, um, infomercials about the machines you put on your body the electrical stimulation you're going to get the six pack right like we would all walk around with six packs if that worked right you actually still have to exercise with the machine to get the results same thing like if it's it's not going to work unless you put the work in and if you're quiet and set the intention and do the breath work first and maybe finish with the stimulation that's great that's bonus um but again i yeah you got to put the work in as well but people are definitely um talking about it more which is great 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 i actually felt like i could talk about this a lot and then each day i was seeing different patients and i Felt like I was on repeat, right? Because everyone needs this message. So I did create an online course, um, which has the first chapter is all about stress. Because a lot of times we we don't even know how stress fully affects our body. Um, it has different, again, it's more about doing the work. There's thing, there's homework throughout. So identifying what your stressors are. Right. A lot of times we're working on calming our nervous system, but we can remove a few of that low hanging fruit to reduce our, the load of stress that we have. And so when you do, again, that work of, OK, let me write out what some of my stressors are. Right. Some people, it's their diet. And they're like, man, I could just easily change my diet a bit and that would be less stress on my body. Right. And some people, it's the opposite. I've had to tell people to slow down on their exercises because they're pound in hitting the pavement and their poor adrenals are shot and they're 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 having resistant weight loss and I'm like but Beth I exercise six days a week and I was like well that's that is actually very stressful <laughs> you know <laughs> and so they're stressing themselves out from a physical standpoint and you know other people are looking into their relationship they might need to get into coaching or counseling but when you start to take an inventory on your stress then again you're eliminating some of the triggers and so the work actually can can really move forward um so the course has a chapter on stress then a chapter on the vagus nerve because there's lots of different ways we can activate it. Like I said, gargling and humming and kind of describes all that and talks a bit about heart rate variability, which is another big buzz. Um, the way I explain it to a lot of my clients is heart rate variability. Think of it as when you breathe in, your heart can beat faster than when you breathe out because of your increasing that intra-abdominal pressure. But if you're just sipping on your breaths and have a very shallow, rapid breathing pattern, then you don't get as much very variability compared to those big, long, slow breaths. So breathing exercises, slowing the breath down will help with your heart rate variability, which is, again, a great predictor of longevity, of health, and um, heart math therefore helps with your heart rate variability as well because you're slowing down that breath. Um, so we talk, I talk a bit about that, definitely heart math. And then the last chapter is actually um, my favorite. It's about habits because I tell people all the time, I'm a physiotherapist, my, oh, here's two exercises, go do them. And they wouldn't do them. And what is wrong with these people? Like, don't they want to get better? The same with heart math. But it's not their fault. We are really, you know, we're creatures of habit and trying to establish a new habit is challenging. So I took the main points out of the book Atomic Habits by James Clear and ex explained how to start a new habit. And essentially, I'll tell you right now, it's called habit stacking. So when you have something that you already do every day, you just add that new habit to it. And that way, you know, it's going to get done because you already do the other thing, 
right? Um, my example is I drink coffee. And so I know I'm going to have a coffee. Sometimes it's at seven, sometimes it's not till 11, but I know if I, I'm always going to have it. Um, that is one of my just pleasures in life. I love coffee. So um, I, I can pair, right? My breathing to my coffee because I know it's going to happen. Um, other and the car is a good example right when you you're going to get in the car most days you get in the car so if you get in the car do some calm breathing or before you get out of the car do some calm breathing so there's lots of people make their bed I personally don't but some people make their bed every day and they compare it to that there's so many things you might get to the office right um anytime you something happens to you every day or you do something every day you compare it and then also you should add a reward, right? We love rewards. So I would actually do my breathing before the coffee. So then the coffee can be the reward, right? So you can actually implement those things in strategic way that it's going to stick like a new habit just by putting it with your old habits, making a reward. And um, yeah, so I kind of outline all of James Clear, um, his his talking points around habits because it works. Wonderful, because yeah, you mentioned you were going to be working on the course. So how do people access it? Is it maybe yeah, you need I, a I link? Can, um, put it in the chat, and I'll share it with them as well. Flicka. So it's um, a URL called flickoffstress.com, and everything's done online. There's on that page, there is an hour long chat that I do um, about the, the course and the things you'll learn. And then you can purchase, it's either a one-time payment or broken down, but you can have a look there. It's it's really great. It is, um, if if you like working through, through your stressors and making changes over time, right? There's a workbook that helps you implement new habits and learn about why it's so important you're doing what you're doing so and then also because now I can help more people right you guys are some of you are in Canada so how cool is that I don't have to have you come to my office I can help you from here so um this is uh, at Ocean Rock Wellness where I work this is really what we're trying to move towards is um, really education and empowerment empowerment, accountability, coaching, that's where the healthcare system is going, right? Um, because you are your own best doctor, you can figure it out, you, um, you really can. So I just, I think it's so cool. Well, it's wonderful. Thank you so much, Beth. I know that people will watch this and they'll probably go watch the uh, the replay as well. It's been great having you here. Um, and we'll continue to collaborate again in the future. Um, Sounds so good. thank you very much. Have I know we're all kind of leaving with hopefully a feeling of joy in our hearts and very much a, a sense of appreciation for having you with us today. Thank you guys. And thank you all for coming today. I really appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.